Welcome back to the Humans of Education podcast. On today's episode, we've got Stephanie Smith. She's a teacher, she's a mother, and she's a certified health and wellness coach who has a passion for giving people their freedom, freedom to live their lives in a healthy and well manner. It's an amazing episode. We talk about her personal journey and how it's changed her life and now what she's doing to impact both her students, her family, and other educators and individuals who need help. Make sure if you like this episode, you tag us on social media, reach out to Stephanie, make sure you follow her on all of her social media platforms. We'll tag those in the show notes. And if you can give us a five star review, wherever you listen to this episode, as always, this humans of education podcast is powered by teacher fit, the only health and wellness program built directly for educators. Enjoy the show and let us know what you think. Welcome back to the show. We are so fortunate today to have Stephanie Smith on the show. She is an educator, a mom, and active in the wellness coaching community. So I am thrilled being in the wellness space myself to have her on the show. So Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Nick. We were just discussing you had a full work day. This is post the bell schedule, as you called it. How was your day today? My day was great. I saw students. So those days are always wonderful. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Um, So I want to give everyone a quick reference point of who you are, how long you've been in education. Just give us a short uh, bio, if you will, to the people who don't know who you are, kind of what is your background in education? Sure. So I've been an educator for 17 years. I followed a pretty traditional route um, out of college into education. I taught high school outside of Boston when I first started. And then I kind of got into curriculum writing because I've always loved to write and it just became a natural fit. So I actually was out of the classroom for about eight years doing coaching and administrative work. And then I was really, I came to the Midwest. Um, I started really studying wellness, which I can talk a little more about, but I was missing the students. And I actually, this is my second year back in the classroom out after stepping away for eight years. So it's been humbling and really rewarding, but I'm, I definitely think that this is where I belong. So uh, yeah, getting to be with kids every day, being kind of on the ground level and uh, getting to roll up my sleeves and do all the things is, is definitely where I want to be. <laughs> awesome. And what grade level are you currently teaching? So I'm currently teaching sixth grade. Yeah. Sixth grade. Okay. Yes. So in your eight years from teaching previously, you kind of came out of the classroom and then you went back in, what was the biggest change you saw in education and the students over that eight year period when you dove right back in? Oh my goodness. Well, it's so funny because as an administrator, I was so linked in with educational technology and I would stand up and talk about all of these great things, like let's have them create and not consume, you know, like I was so, I wanted to support teachers and student learning um, to be really creative and to utilize technology in meaningful ways. Um, that being said, there something felt a little inauthentic because that technology didn't exist when I was in the classroom. So, right. you know, part of my desire to get back in there has been to experience some of these things and to see what it's really like in the classroom to, you know, utilize devices, have access to all the information and, you know, really kind of flip um, the narrative a little bit from the traditional teaching and let the students be more of the leaders in the classroom and, you know, recognize how important it is to teach them about um, you know, finding reliable information and looking at multiple sides of an issue. Like it's a oh, so important right now. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really essential for them to understand those things. So it's been, um, great to kind of live the other end of that. And I would definitely say that it's a innovative time to be back in the classroom. Yeah, for sure. That's, 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 interesting to hear. And I love hearing that you're teaching that with regards to the use of technology, just for everyone's reference. I think this is going to come out on Wednesday, but we're the day before the election currently. So that's why it's so important that we hear both sides of any issue. Um, So my next question is what, 
what is the environment currently at your district and your school? Are you virtual? Are you combo? Are you in person? What does that look like? Just so we all see the different sides of what education looks like. I know there's so many different scenarios right now. So we are actually back in person five days a week with all of our students and have been since we started in mid-August. And so my school district was able to figure out how to socially distance students. Um, They offered a remote learning option for families who wanted that and for teachers as well. And so about 20% is doing remote learning and then 80% is in the building every day. So Um, So far, you know, we've had very few um, students who have been sick. People have been really responsible about, you know, self-certifying their wellness and, you know, parents and teachers. I think we're all working in partnership. And when we first started, it was kind of like, well, maybe we'll be here for a week and see what happens. But, you know, I've got to be honest, we're grateful that we're still there because, you know, we prefer to, to be able to interact with the kids, you know, in person. Absolutely. And that's great to hear that it's going well, you know, you I think we only hear a lot of the horror stories of like people are catching this and catching that and it's not, not working, but it's great to hear that there are districts and schools that are doing it right and everyone's safe and healthy. So that's great to hear. I want to get a little bit deeper into yourself and kind of what brought you to where we're at today. Um, you have the most beautiful Instagram page <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when I came upon it. Uh, that's edu healthy on Instagram. That'll be in the show notes, but beautiful food, just galore that I want to try and eat and all the good things. I'm a big nutrition uh, person. I'm a certified nutrition coach as well, um, but I'm not a cook. So I'm more of the simple version. So doing my research before the show, I found multiple posts talking about you making a healthy lifestyle change and realizing how nutrition changed both you physically and mentally. Um, I want to talk about where were you before that change and then get into that change and kind of where you are now. So where were you when kind of this discovery was made? Sure. So I think it goes back to, you know, being a teenager in like to age myself here in the nineties, where I feel like there was so much misinformation about nutrition and, you know, it was the fat free craze and everybody was, you know, really gravitating towards highly processed things with lots of sugar and only thinking about total fat content. And so I I was kind of lost when it came to nutrition and it was sort of in my twenties, finding a community of people who were interested in strength training and fitness that I sort of started to understand what it meant to really be strong and not approach eating in a way that felt restrictive and not approach exercise in a way that was sort of punishment for, you know, eating poorly. It was more, you know, let's exercise as a way to celebrate what your body can do. And food is a way to sort of fuel that. And so I had this mindset shift and then, you know, I went on to have two kids and life was really busy and, um, my energy was just sort of flat, right? Like, um, I wasn't feeling my best. And so it wasn't about wanting to make necessarily a physical change to my body. I just wanted to feel better, to have more patience, to have more energy. And so, um, that was when it's probably been, geez, about eight years. I started to learn about nutrition on my own. Um, you know, I did a couple whole thirties. I realized what it meant to take processed foods out of my diet, to pay attention to sugar content, to really amp up my vegetable intake. And I felt so much better. So I saw my athletic performance. I love to run. Like I saw that, you know, make improvements that I didn't think would be possible post kids. And, you know, my strength was greater, but also just less depression, fatigue, you know, just sort of like a stable mood. And I thought, this is amazing. And I just don't feel like everyone knows about it, right? The power of that is not something that I feel like a lot of people have tapped into. Um, And people were approaching me and saying like, what are you doing? And I felt like I was having those conversations with people. And that was when it occurred to me, like, I really want to make an impact in this arena because I'm watching people live sort of suboptimally um, because they don't know how to do it. You know, it's not a lack of desire to... um, live a healthier life. It's just, you know, they maybe are misguided and there's so many things that can kind of distract us from taking care of ourselves. And so that's what um, led me to pursue um, studying nutrition more formally. Very cool. So going back to 
you know, you're feeling a lack of energy. You mentioned yeah. depression, like all these things. Was there a certain like one instance or can you highlight an instance maybe when you were teaching or at work or with family that really you were just like, okay, enough is enough. I need to make a change. Or was it just kind of that gradual realization that again, you weren't living optimally? Sure. So I think it was after the birth of my second daughter, I was working an administrative uh, position where I presented almost every day. And I, you know, people were saying, oh, you look great. And it was like, I, I felt terrible. Right. And so this, right. like, it was like this, um, you know, it didn't make any sense to me that people were judging your health by outward appearance. And it was really like stress, exhaustion, fatigue, like caused weight loss that people interpreted as like health. health right. And truthfully, I was, you know, like having so much caffeine and, you know, relying on sugar throughout the day, I would always like provide treats for the teachers when they were coming. And so I wouldn't have time to sit down for lunch. So Honestly, I was fueling myself with candy and caffeine during the day. And They're then, good stuff. you know, right. Like, <laughs> oh, and then going home and surprisingly, you know, not feeling great. <laughs> so right? that was when I was like, this is, this is not working for me because I just knew it wasn't sustainable. And I wanted, you know, I wanted to get back to things that I had done previously, but also approach them um, with more knowledge. Right. I sort of followed the lead of others in my late twenties, but I still think, I didn't have it quite right. Um, when I was really interested in strength training and things like that, there were a lot of like protein bars and more like artificial ways of, you know, convenient nutrition. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and I was interested in like, how do I cook for my family and how, you know, I love to cook. So how can I do that in a way that sort of honors this idea of fueling yourself with stuff that's good for your brain, good for your mood, um, more so than, thinking about trying to change what's your the, appearance. What's the quick and easy way to do this? Yeah, right. Yeah, I love I love that part about your presenting every day. And it's something I talk to educators about and the whole kind of idea behind our teacher fit program and student fit program is being the impact by example and teachers having the energy to approach the classroom and connect with students for hours on end and they're standing and they're moving. And if you're exhausted and not feeling hundred percent because you ate junk or you're dehydrated or you don't sleep well, or you, you know, you're just out of shape, um, you're not going to be able to provide a high quality period of instruction, like right. attention levels are already low. You know, kids are stimulated by every TikTok video you could imagine and Instagram and everything else. Like you have to, you have to present. And that's where like, I saw the teachers that were able to do that were the ones that were in shape. And that kind of led to the whole foundation of the program. So I love that. Um, and then, yeah, not being attached to the quick fix. I think we all went through it and I, it sounds like we're about in the same age range. Yeah. Um, we went through like the low fat and now we're going through the keto low carb movement and everything's like quick fix, do this, do that, as opposed to let's learn the foundational principles of nutrition that will carry us long-term. So getting to how we can help educators as an educator yourself, what are one to two things that a, a teacher can listen to this today, tonight, tomorrow, whenever it comes out and take action to start improving their nutrition today? Sure. So I think, first of all, recognizing that wellness is a holistic idea and that you're not your total wellness, you need to consider all aspects of your life, right? Like stress plays a major factor. Sleep plays a major factor. I talk to people all the time about how, you know, you can't even cue into your natural hunger cues when you're sleep deprived, right? Or when you're dehydrated. So those are some, some things that I think sometimes people don't come to the table when they want to know, like, what diet should I do? And it's like, no, this is about your total wellness, right? So we really need to step back and look at the whole picture. We need to address some other things first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like you're super stressed out, not sleeping, drinking zero water. Like let's take right. care of those things first. Um, and you know, um, I think being hydrated is one of those key things, making sure you have a good night's sleep. Absolutely. And then from nutrition, I think people need to recognize something that I like to talk about, which is bio-individuality, which is what works for your individual system is unique. You're like your own ecosystem. And there are some things that can be replicated that are good for most people. 
Um, but I think you're right on like so many people approach me knowing my background and they say, you know, my friend tried keto and it was great for them. Or how do you feel about carbs? And it's like, well, it kind of depends on your own system. Like yep. you have to recognize that your body is unique. And just because something works for someone else does not mean it's going to be something that works for you. And so, you know, anything that focuses on um, large scale elimination is really tough to sustain over time. So I like to help people kind of shift their mindset, think about having what I say is a nourishing mindset. Instead of focusing on all the things we're not going to have, let's focus on the things that are really good for us to include. And for most people, that's thinking about kind of building around um, good protein sources, healthy fats and vegetables, right? Yep. Everything else, it's not to say you can't have dairy or you can't have carbs. It's like your unique system is going to have to, you know, let's figure out if those things are good for you. But you know, first and foremost, when I talk to people and go through, like, walk me through what you eat in a day, people are sometimes shocked to admit when they look at it, I don't eat any vegetables, yep. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and there's so many benefits to preventing disease, improving cognitive function, um, reducing depression, all of those things, you know, and I would say protein is a close second um, to people recognizing that sometimes they're really missing that. But um yeah, super simple. And that's exactly how we talk about it. Even in our teacher fit challenge, the first zero week, as we call it is to just, Hey, let's build self-awareness. Let's track our food. Let's understand what we are or are not doing. And then we're going to start adding in the good stuff. Yeah. And hopefully that pushes out some of the stuff that we don't need that may be an excess, or it's just not healthy for us to eat those processed foods and those types of things. Um, I love that, but I love even more the first part, what you were talking about with regards to the holistic approach and understanding, you know, you have to be mentally and emotionally ready just because Steve or Jan lost 10 pounds doing keto and they have all the keto pow powders that they now want to sell you. Does it mean that that's going to work for you? And you have to be right. emotionally ready and mentally prepared to make a change. Yeah. And like the importance of that, I think goes understated that if you're not ready, it's never going to last. You're not going to be committed, all those things. So what, what can we do to become, you know, I'm not happy with how, that my energy level, with how I look, how I feel. I want to be able to bring passion to the classroom. You know, what can I do to start dialing in maybe that mental practice before I start worrying about food? Like what, what, what things can I do? Is it journaling? Is it reading? Sure. I don't know. Um, so, well, first and foremost, I think recognizing that mental health is super important. Um, I work, you know, once I got tapped into wellness, I got connected with um, an organization here in Chicago called Simply Be, which is a wellness practice. Um, and, you know, they focus on this idea of it's not just mental health, it's thinking about your physical health, your spiritual health, and all of that. And so, you know, um, I'm drawn to the work you're doing too, because I see that you have a focus on mindfulness and mm -hmm. things like that. And I think we're talking about that whole picture. So, yep. You know, I love like Sean Aker's happiness advantage and focusing on positive psychology. And I think, you know, there are different ways that people can get their mindset right. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, working with a therapist is really helpful. Um, reading books can be helpful too, but small little habits um, like, you know, um, using a meditation app for one to two minutes a day, you know, over the course of two weeks, that can totally rewire your brain or keeping a quick gratitude list every day. Like those things are so simple. Um, and I think sometimes overlooked, but you know, they really can help you be more positive and start to shift your perspective. So, yeah, I love, I've loved both of those recommendations, you know, maybe not one or the other will be great for anyone, but yeah. if you're not trying something, I think you're missing the boat. I, myself, I love to journal, you know, I start every journal entry with three to five things of gratitude. And a lot of people get wrapped around like, Oh, this is like a gratitude practice. Like it's woo woo, you know, yeah. but like it could be like, Hey, I slept well last night or mm -hmm. my dog or, you know, it's, it's not raining today or it's not snowing as we go into winter, you know, just little things like that. And I, I forget who said it, but I read somewhere, like if you're practicing gratitude in that moment, you could not be unhappy. Like if you're right. thinking about what you're grateful for, it's impossible to be negative um, and start your day that way. So I think those are both amazing recommendations. Uh, I am going to have simply be counseling, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Linked also in the show notes. So you guys definitely give them a follow. It's, is it all local work? Is there online work? Sure. We have a new program 
it's called the four by four for educators. So we recognize they've had Simply Be Classroom for several years, going in and working with students and teachers somewhat locally. Um, Audrey Grunst, who's the founder and CEO, she's a therapist and she, you know, recognized that there was a need for kind of supplementing social emotional learning for students. And, yep. um, you know, she's done a lot of work around trying to reduce anxiety, which has been impactful in the community. Um, but, you know, when we connected, it, it was sort of like this, group realization that, you know, there's a huge need for educators right now because educators need to care for themselves to be available, um, you know, to set the tone for wellness in the classroom, but also, you know, just to be able to function at, at their highest level. And so, you know, we have some free resources on the website. There's also an online course that people can take that focuses on different aspects of health, like mindset and physical health um, as well. But you know, again, right up the alley of thinking about wellness as a holistic um, yeah. enterprise. And um, I think they're doing some good things in the community. I'm getting the chance to sort of speak at some conferences around the idea of um, teachers taking care of themselves and setting that tone. I called it the wellness effect, right? Like if you show it. up well, it, you know, you can pass that on. Um, and then um, at the end of January, I'm having the opportunity to speak um, at the ASCD conference with the same idea that administrators, you know, having kind of seen both sides, um, administrators aren't taking care of themselves as well as they could be either, right? And they set the tone for the community. So 100%. You know, it can, <laughs> these things, right? Like sleeping, um, mindfulness practices, hydrating, having some nourishing nutrition habits they can make a huge difference in people's ability to perform and also just to like feel wellness, which yep. is underrated. <laughs> so, so underrated and missing yeah. in yeah. today's uh, culture. Um, and I, you know, the principle of leadership by example, it's something that, you know, obviously in my military time was, was so important to us as military leaders. And I try to implement that into educators in a big way. And it's just, just by carrying yourself a certain way and taking care of yourself, you never know who's watching, right. whether that be a subordinate teacher or cafeteria staff, a bus driver, a student, whoever it may be, like you could impact that person just by carrying a water bottle around and drinking water. Like, Oh, I should do that. And that could yes. be a game changer for someone. So that's a powerful, powerful thing. Guys, make sure you check out simply be counseling on Instagram. I checked out all the links earlier, some awesome resources, and you can connect with that whole team uh, via the website. It looks like I want to get to some fun questions, fun sure. slash deep. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> okay. But I ask everyone a couple questions at the end to get some, some deep thought in. Uh, the first one is what is one subject not taught in school that every student should experience? And why? Oh, goodness. Um, ethics. <laughs> ethics. I love it. Yeah. Why? Tell me more. Um, I just think that it's a pivotal time in the world right now for us to think about um, seeing things from different perspectives and being able to, you know, we touch on this academically, but I really do feel like um, having empathy for other people is a big part of, you know, an ethical mindset. And so I would love to see that. Um, as a more concentrated um, content area in schools. Empathy and ethics 101. <laughs> I love yes. it. Yeah. Um, if you were going to give a TED Talk this weekend, what would the, the subject and title be of that TED Talk? Um, let's see. How sleep can change your life. <laughs> I, think I is love what it. I would Simple. Do. Yeah. Um, our, oh, man. Who is it? I'm going to think of it. She did, she did a ton of research. She runs a huge publication. Ari in the Huffington. Yes. Huffington. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know how that just slipped my mind like right then, but yes. Amazing work. If you guys haven't looked at the work she did, I believe it's a book as well, right? Yeah. Um, she, I think she, she's done multiple podcasts on it. Tons of good information on sleep. Um, a lot of people get wrapped around. I think even now more so with COVID and teachers being all over the place that, they have to stay up late and prep and get up early and prep and do all these things. And I think what's more important is time management. Like how quality is the work that you're doing during your normal work day and then maintaining that sleep that you need, the eight hours or whatever you personally need to set you up for success. Um, one more deep one. With your work in coaching and education, when your work is complete, not that it ever will be, but when your work is complete, what will the world look like and how will it be different? Oh, let's see. My goodness. That's a great question. Um, 
honestly, I just want people to feel their best, right? I want them to feel emotionally and physically their best. And so if as many people as possible can figure out what that means for them and make those changes to their life, and they know how to sort of take care of themselves and their mental health and their physical health, and they can pass that on to other people, I think I would feel like that was a job well done. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, just waking up every day and feeling good is I think something that so many people want to feel, but they don't. Um, and if, yeah, if you can do that, good luck. Yeah. I, right. I, and I, having... I think we're, we're on the same mission. <laughs> yeah, we are, which is good. Cause I mean, I love everything that you're doing to get people moving because that has such a big impact on your mental wellness too. Right. Like it's so yeah, compelling sure. to think yeah. about moving your body and how much that makes a difference. For sure. And last, who do you think in education that we should talk to next? Oh my goodness. That's a great question. Um, let me think. I think you should talk to Dr. Michelle Borba, if you can get her. She is the author of the book on selfie and it's all about teaching kids to be empathetic and how that has a great impact on their overall well-being and happiness. Can you spell her last name for me? Sure. It's B-O-R-B-A. C-A? B-A. B-A. Borba. Yeah. yeah. And her book is Unselfie, which is really cleverly titled. You know, it's about a self-centered society, but how to help kids be more empathetic. All right, Michelle, I'm going to be finding you. So if you're listening to this, <laughs> I'll be reaching out soon. Man, what a cool episode. It's so good to connect with someone in the wellness world, also connected to education and doing such powerful and important work for educators. Stephanie, I really appreciate your time. Um, can you share where everyone can follow you? I know I'm going to put your Instagram in the show notes. Where else should people look for you and your beautiful food, food pictures? <laughs> Always happy to share recipes. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram at edu healthy and I'm on Twitter at Mrs. Smith thinks. So I'd be happy to connect. Awesome. Maybe we'll do a virtual cook-off, my cooking versus your cooking, and we'll do a photo <laughs> challenge. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Sounds great. I look forward to it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you can, leave us a five-star review. Comment wherever you see this uh, video or recording on your podcast or YouTube, social media, and make sure you follow EDU Healthy on Instagram and everywhere else. Stephanie, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too, Nick. Take care. Thank you.